Here are four reasons you should not masturbate as a Christian man. Number one, you should not masturbate because it is a sin according to the Bible. The word masturbation or self-pleasure is certainly not seen in scripture, but the category of masturbation is a sin in scripture. So there are many sins that are not listed in scripture because they're a part of a general category that includes those sins in them. And to be clear, I'm not talking about the lust that is normally associated with masturbation. I'm literally talking about the, the physical act of masturbation apart from the lust that usually occurs, which I'll talk about in the points ahead. The physical act of masturbation is a sin according to scripture for the reasons I'm about to explain. So again, it's really about a categorical sin. So for example, the F word is not in scripture, but it's a sin to use the F word because it's under the category or it fits in the category of foul speech. Insider trading is not a term you will see in scripture, but it is a sin to do it because it goes against the leadership and laws of the land, as it talks about in Romans 13. It's theft and it's deceitful, which are categories that insider trading would fit into. Abortion is not a word you will find in the Bible, but it's in the category of murder. Therefore, it is a sin. And this same principle can be seen when it comes to masturbation. For example, the best place to see this, in my opinion, is when you read 1 Corinthians 7 verses 1 through 9. In that passage, it's very clear that the only options for sexual pleasure are between a husband and a wife. If you are married, you are only allowed to have sexual pleasure when your wife or husband is involved. And when you are single, you are to pursue marriage so you can enjoy sexual pleasure with your spouse or completely abstain in singleness. There is no sexual pleasure category when you're by yourself in the Bible. When that happens, it's called sexual immorality. So masturbation is condemned in scripture through what is condoned in scripture. There are categories that help us know what is sin and what is not sin. The Bible is not an encyclopedia listing every possible type of sin you could ever commit in the history of humanity. That's not what the purpose of the Bible is. But through studying what is prescribed, meaning what God wants us to do, we can then know all of what is proscribed, meaning what God doesn't want us to do. And masturbation clearly fits into that category of what God does not want us to do because of what it specifically says God does want us to do with our sexuality. Number two, you should not masturbate because it always leads to lust. Now, maybe you don't like the argument that I just made in point one about masturbation being a sin because of the idea of categorical, categorical sin. And that's fine. <laughs> I think that's a pretty convincing argument. Maybe you want to see it specifically named in the Bible so that you know, okay, this is for sure a sin because it's directly said it's a sin in scripture. That's the only way you'll accept that it is a sin. Well, I think you could see that in the Bible in Matthew 5 verses 27 through 30. Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. Now, what do you think Jesus is talking about here when he says your right hand causes you to sin? You, let's put it in context. He just talked about adultery. He just talked about lusting with your eye. And then the very next thing he says is about committing a sin with your hand. I think it's very reasonable to conclude that Jesus is making a direct reference to masturbation here, saying that you should not do it. In my opinion, if he was to be any more descriptive, it would be crude. It would be something that shouldn't be said in scripture. So, just to 
drive this point home, I'm going to say this in a crude way to show you that it would not be fitting for it to be in scripture. Jesus would have had to say to be it for it to be any more descriptive, if you fondle your penis with your hand and cause yourself to ejaculate, that is a sin. Do you think that that needs to be in there? Because I don't. I don't think it needs to be that descriptive. I think saying adultery sin, saying lusting with your eye is sin, then saying committing a sin with your hand directly in that context gets the picture across in a less crude way. So is it possible that Jesus was just randomly mentioning some other unrelated sin that you could commit with your right hand when, you're, when he was just talking about lusting by yourself? Yes, it is possible. This is an inference. Jesus didn't directly say masturbation here or self-pleasure here, but I think he said that the description that is most close to possibly just saying the word, which at that time wasn't a word that they used because really it's a medical term that's been created in modern society to describe this act. Okay, all of that to say, at minimum, when you read this passage in Matthew 5, 27 through 30, you can at least see that lusting is obviously and clearly a sin and that when we're being honest about masturbation, it's almost always connected to lust. Most men who masturbate start that process by lusting after something with their eyes. And even if you or someone, you hear this argument from someone is the exception and says they masturbate with a blank mind and don't think of a woman and it's just a purely physical act, that is still stoking the sexual fires in your body, which does not coincide with the command in 1 Corinthians 6, 18 to flee from sexual immorality. It doesn't say masturbate, it doesn't say do something by yourself so that you can blow off some steam and not have such a strong sexual desire. It says flee from it. And the way you flee from it is by avoiding the sexual temptation, abstaining in singleness, pursuing marriage, and if you're married, you have sex with your spouse. Number three, you should not masturbate because it will keep you single. Now, a sexual desire is not the main biblical reason a man should pursue marriage. It's not why you should pursue a woman because you just wanna have sex generally or you just wanna have sex with that woman. However, when you read scripture, it is very clear that a strong sexual desire especially one that you struggle to control, is a sign that God has wired you to have the gift of marriage rather than the gift of singleness, and thus you should pursue marriage rather than intentionally pursuing singleness like someone would who has the gift of singleness. As Paul said, but because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. To the unmarried and the widows, I say that it is good for them to remain single, as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. So a sexual desire that you don't quench through masturbation is given to you by God as a way of motivating you to pursue marriage. And I'm not just saying the sexual desire to have sex is why you should pursue marriage. Rather, your sexual desire is directly attached to your mind and your heart. And it's attached and it's an overflow of your desire to love a woman in an emotional way in a relationship. It's not just a physical act. Sex is has a lot of meaning to it. And the sexual desires you have mean more than just, oh, you have a biological urge to, you know, have an orgasm. That's not what you are truly experiencing at the heart of those sexual desires. At the heart of those sexual desires, you have a longing to love a woman in marriage and that gets overflowed and expressed through your sexual desires. So having said that, when you 
tap into that sexual desire and release that sexual desire, you're also releasing the things that are supposed to come along with that, like the emotional desire, the relationship desire to pursue a woman. And so when you masturbate, you're decreasing the motivation you should have to pursue a woman, and thus you remain single for longer than you should, sometimes forever, because you have an apathy in life and in relationships that wouldn't be there if you weren't sinning in this area. And number four, you should not masturbate because it's bad for your mental health. So I've been talking about this topic for a while now on the internet. I have videos from years ago, and one of the comments that I regularly get on this topic from men is, well, science says that it's good for your health. Masturbation's good for you. Why are you telling people not to masturbate? And to that, I just say, that's a dumb argument. It really is. It's stupid. If you really think you're going to have some huge health problem because you don't masturbate, then you're just wrong. You're not going to die if you don't masturbate. So just get over that and stop that silliness. Now, if you're just absolutely convinced that your body needs masturbation to be healthy, well, I would say to you that you should spend your energy being a healthy person to pursue a relationship so that your body can experience sex and marriage as God designed it, rather than sitting at home masturbating by yourself. Additionally, I believe God has given your body a tool that when it truly does need a release for your health, it will automatically do that. And we call that a nocturnal emission. That just happens automatically when you're sleeping if your body has too much built up sperm and it needs a release. So if it truly needed a release, you'll just do that naturally. You don't need to masturbate. Now, what's been interesting to me over the years is that Christians have been saying masturbation is not good for you for a long time. And now I'm starting to see a lot of secular evidence that shows that it's also not good for you. Not that we need secular evidence, but it's interesting to see that the culture is kind of catching up. And if you just research the idea of no fap, right? You start seeing these videos on the internet, people talking about the science behind the benefits of not masturbating. So for some, for some, they say that it can increase your testosterone, which again, increases your drive to do hard things. It's beneficial for your body. Um, I think the best argument of why masturbation is bad for you, like from a psychological and scientific reason, is because when you experience sexual pleasure, your body releases a hormone called oxytocin. And this hormone is directly linked to pair bonding. So it's what happens when a mother, it's just a hormone that a mother experiences when she has a baby that causes her to bond in sex a man and woman experience oxytocin and that causes them to become attached to each other. And so when you masturbate and you experience a rush of oxytocin, which is supposed to be a pair bonding hormone that God's given for a husband and wife and in other circumstances to create healthy attachments, you're by yourself having a hormone that produces attachments. You're going to feel lonely. You're going to feel isolated. Masturbation increases a poor mental health state. It causes guilt because you know it's sin, and it causes you to feel lonely because you're doing something that should be only done in marriage. As Dr. Anna Lembark talks about in her book called Dopamine Nation, while truth-telling promotes human attachment, compulsive overconsumption of high dopamine goods is the antithesis of human attachment. Consuming leads to isolation and indifference as the drug comes to replace the reward obtained from being in relationships with others. Experiments show that a free rat will instinctively work to free another rat trapped inside a plastic bottle. But once that free rat has been allowed to self-administer heroin, it is no longer interested in helping out the caged rat. Presumably too caught up in an opioid haze to care about a fellow member of its species. If you want to keep learning about this topic, here's a playlist of past videos I've done on this topic. The playlist is called, What Does the Bible Say About Masturbation? I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com. Until next time, God bless.